Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa left the UAE after an official visit in response to the invitation from the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, to participate in COP28. At the forefront of farewells to His Majesty were the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of thanks to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in which he expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. As His Majesty departs the UAE after attending COP28, chaired by His Highness competently, which stems from the deep rooted fraternal relations and historical depth between the two countries. His Majesty hailed the UAE's hosting of the conference and its outcomes, which can reduce carbon emissions and contribute to enhancing sustainable development and the reliance on clean energy. His Majesty the King also expressed appreciation for His Highness's efforts and pride in his keenness to strengthen the process of multilateral action and support the endeavors aimed at unifying international efforts at all levels. As well as devoting cooperation with international organizations to serving the common international interests of all peoples. His Majesty wished His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed abundant health and happiness and the UAE further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended the opening session of the 44th Summit of the Supreme Council of the GCC alongside his brothers, their majesties, their highnesses, the leaders of the GCC. The session was inaugurated by the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, in the Sheraton Hotel in Doha. His Majesty's participation as the head of the Bahrain delegation derives from His Majesty's keenness to enhance the GCC joint action and achieve the aspired goals towards further GCC cooperation and coordination, as well as meet the aspiration of the GCC people towards further progress and prosperity. The Kingdom's participation reflects its firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and affirming the legitimate rights of Palestinian people to establish their independent state in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative launched by Saudi Arabia, which earned Arab and Islamic support and was adopted by a number of European countries. It also reflects the Kingdom's efforts under the leadership of His Majesty the King to unify diplomatic efforts by mobilizing international support for the recognition of the Palestinian state, especially since the non-recognition of the Palestinian state is the main reason for the recurrence of armed conflicts and the loss of innocent lives. The participation also reaffirms the firm position of the Kingdom of Bahrain on the importance of adhering to international humanitarian laws and relevant international norms regarding the protection of civilians, especially children, women and the elderly, as they are the most vulnerable group in such armed conflicts. It also affirms the complete rejection of forced displacement of Palestinians outside their land, which is a violation of all laws and international norms. During the opening session, the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, affirmed the importance of enhancing joint GCC action to enhance the GCC status regionally and internationally. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلى بركة الله أعلن افتتاح الدورة الرابعة والأربعين لمجلس العلا لمجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أخواني أصحاب الجلالة توسموا أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أحييكم تحية أخوية صادقة وأرحب بكم أخوتنا عزاء في بلدكم الثاني قطر بين أهلكم نلتقي اليوم آملين أن يسهم التواصل والتفاهم بين القادة في تنمية وتعزيز العمل الخليجي المشترك بما يحقق مصالح دولنا وتطلعات شعوبنا ويعزز مكانة مجلس التعاون إقليميا ودوليا ويتوح فرصا أكبر للنمو والازدهار ويسهم في ترسيخ الأمن والاستقرار في المنطقة والعالم إن المتغيرات الدولية والإقليمية المتسارعة تحتم تشاورا مستمرا وتنسيقا بيننا للتعامل معها وتجنب تبعاتها ودعم مكتسبات مجلسنا في شتى المجالات الاقتصادية والأمنية والاجتماعية وغيرها وإني لعلى ثقة أن دول مجلس يمكنها التوصل إلى التفاهم والتعاون بما من شأنه أن يسهم أيضا في حل بعض القضايا الإقليمية 
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the leaders of the GCC countries participated in the closing session of the 44th Summit of the GCC Supreme Council in the presence of the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan at the Guest of Honor, which was held under the chairmanship of the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani at Sheraton Hotel in Doha. The Qatari Emir delivered a speech in which he expressed pleasure with the fraternity demonstrated at the meeting, which is characterized by understanding and keenness and objectivity in discussion and wisdom in drafting decisions. He expressed hope that the summit will contribute to the prosperity of GCC countries and their people and to serving Arab and Islamic causes. He also expressed pride and, and welcome to the GCC leaders, wishing them continued success in serving their countries and peoples. The Turkish president also addressed the summit discussing GCC-Turkish cooperation and affirming that the relations are progressing steadily. He noted that the volume of trade exchange between the GCC and Turkey had reached $23 billion, adding that over the last two decades, the volume of trade exchange between the two sides had increased 13-fold. Regarding the situation in the Gaza Strip, President Erdogan stressed the need to reach a ceasefire, warning of the possibility of turning into a regional war. He also affirmed that the ultimate goal is to establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. The GCC Secretary General Jason Abdewi also delivered a statement on the occasion. Then the Emir of Qatar announced the conclusion of the summit. It is important to praise the stances and the firm position of the GCC countries towards the Palestinian cause. These stances help alleviate the severing of Palestinians. We call on the international community to assume its responsibilities and call for an immediate ceasefire and facilitate the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza and reach a two-state solution in order to achieve peace and security in the region and protect civilians. We hailed the high level of coordination among the GCC leaders regarding this issue and the efforts exerted in supporting the Palestinian cause and alleviate their suffering. The GCC achieved a prestigious regional and international position, which attracted world countries to further enhance the multilateral relations and hold strategic partnerships. The public security and GCC countries work continuously to achieve the best interests for the goals of the GCC through various partnerships and cooperation with regional and international organizations. The GCC countries continue to witness continuous developments and our participation here reflects our keenness to further enhance our multilateral relations. I believe that we can further enhance our cooperation and coordination through unifying our efforts. The commercial trade between Turkey and GCC countries witnessed significant development over the past two decades, reaching $23 billion. It is also important to continue to implement the free trade agreement between Turkey and the GCC. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended a lunch banquet hosted by the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. The banquet is held in honor of their majesties and highnesses, leaders of the GCC, on the occasion of Qatar's hosting the 44th Summit of GCC Supreme Council at the Sheraton Hotel. After that, His Majesty bid farewell to His Highness the Emir of Qatar and other leaders of GCC countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had arrived in Qatar to participate in the 44th session of the Supreme Council of the GCC. This came following the invitation of the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. His Majesty the King was received in Doha International Airport by His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad and a number of officials.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to the Kingdom of Bahrain from Qatar after participating in the opening session of the 44th Summit of the Supreme Council of the GCC. His Majesty was received by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had departed Qatar earlier today. His Majesty sent a cable to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, where His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the Emir for the warm welcome and generous hospitality following the participation in the summit, which reflects a deep rooted that ties binding the two countries. His Majesty praised the efforts exerted to hold the summit and hailed the positive outcomes that resulted from it that will contribute to enhancing the joint GCC march and will add to the series of GCC achievements as well as achieve the inspired goals and meet the aspiration of the GCC people. His Majesty wished the Emir lasting good health and happiness and for Qatar and its people further progress and prosperity. Since its establishment as a comprehensive Arab Gulf entity, the Kingdom of Bahrain has strengthened its relationship with an active role at the Gulf Cooperation Council, which stems from its belief in the importance of cooperation, solidarity and partnership with its brotherly Gulf neighbors. Bahrain enjoys close political, security, economic and social ties with the GCC, which was the solid foundation for the development and advancement of relations to the highest levels of coordination and integration among member states, to achieve the visions and aspirations of their majesties and highnesses, the founders of the Council. The leaders of the GCC states followed the path of fraternity in order to achieve the interests of their countries and peoples in promoting growth, progress and prosperity and continuing development in various political, economic and security fields until the achievements of the GCC countries became a symbol of development and prosperity, which earned them a prominent position regionally and internationally. The Kingdom of Bahrain was, and still is, an active Gulf and Arab state, seeking to preserve its solid Arab and Islamic principles by promoting peace, coexistence and brotherhood, which it embodied as a tangible reality in its historical fraternal relations with the Council states and brotherly and friendly countries, stemming from its belief in the solid principles, common destiny, harmony and agreement that unify the Gulf states. His Royal Highness the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Ambassador of the United Kingdom to Bahrain Alistair Long at Gdabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which are based on solid foundations of cooperation spanning over 200 years. The Deputy King noted the mutual commitment to furthering bilateral relations through mutual visits and joint agreements to achieve mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness commended the UK's role alongside allied countries in consolidating international security and peace, which supports development and prosperity in the region and inter Internationally. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the Bahrain UK strategic partnership to enhance multi sector collaboration. During the meeting, regional and global development issues of common interest and ways to enhance bilateral cooperation were also discussed. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a congratulatory cable to the member of the National Council for Arts, Sheikh Dhuwa bint Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, on the occasion of her winning second place in the International Digital Art Competition, held in Dubai on the sidelines of the 28th session of the Conference of the Parties COP28 to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Her Royal Highness expressed pride in Sheikh Abdullah's achievements in such an important forum, which affirms her distinction in the artistic field with its modern techniques and her keenness to rely on solid scientific research methodologies so that the artistic messages of her works contribute to awareness and education on issues of international concern. At the conclusion of the cable, Her Royal Highness, the wife of the, His Majesty the King, hailed the efforts of Sheikh Abdullah and her continuous pursuit of further excellence and achievement.
The member of the National Arts Council, Sheikh Hado bint Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, was able to win second place out of 150 participants around the world as a finalist in the Global Digital Art Competition. The competition was held during COP28 at Expo City in Dubai under the slogan, Let us work together to strengthen climate action efforts. Sheikh Hado welcomed her achievement, expressing her honor in dedicating this achievement to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW. Sheikh Adawa said achieving second place in this global competition reflects the continuous support that Bahraini artists receive and the encouragement to harness their message aimed at achieving the goals of the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King. She explained that the selection of her digital artworks in this competition is a motivation and incentive for all artists to continue employing their energy and creativity in serving the cause of climate change. She affirmed that the widespread and global demand for participation in this competition confirms its high status and its reputation among artists whose participation participation is characterized by creativity and innovation. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received top sports achievers in recent tournaments. His Highness affirmed that Bahrain has supported the sports sector, providing all necessary means to enable sports teams competing under the name of Team Bahrain to achieve victories and podiums in international events. His Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and congratulated them on these outstanding results. He affirmed the support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the ongoing development of the sports scene in Bahrain. The Secretary General of the BOC, Faraz Mustafa Al Kohaji, expressed pride in celebrating a new batch of athletes. He praised the support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, and the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid.
The Representatives Council held its weekly session, chaired by its Speaker Ahmed Al-Musallam. The Council approved a decree by law on amending a number of provisions of Decree by Law 15 of 1986 on regulating tourism. It also approved amending a number of provisions of Decree by Law 42 of 1999 on establishing Bahrain Petroleum Company. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Interior Minister General Sheikh Raja bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the Arab International Cybersecurity Conference and Exhibition. The event represents a global platform to exchange expertise and reinforce cybersecurity cooperation and awareness to promote cyberspace security protection efforts. The Minister then delivered the following speech. <laughs> ومملكة البحرين ستستضيف المؤتمر والمعرض الدولي العربي الثاني للأمن السيبراني انطلاقا من الرؤية الملكية السامية لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه بالتحول إلى النظم الرقمية في تقديم الخدمات ضمن خطة متكاملة يتم تنفيذها وفق معايير دولية تعمل على تعزيز الأمن السيبراني ويشرفني في هذا المقام أن أنقل لكم تحيات صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله راعي المؤتمر وتمنيات سموه بتحقيق الأهداف المرجوة حيث يمثل انعقاد هذا المؤتمر خطوة استراتيجية تعكس التزام حكومة مملكة البحرين بتعزيز الاستدامة الرقمية وحماية البيانات في عصر التكنولوجيا الحديث الحضور الكريم يأتي هذا المؤتمر في إطار العمل الجماعي من أجل تعزيز الوعي بالأمن السيبراني وحماية البنى التحتية الرقمية ومواجهة التحديات والمخاطر الأمنية الإلكترونية حيث تبقى سياسة المعالجة للهجمات السيبرانية لصالح الكفة التي بيدها زمام المبادر لشن هذه الهجمات بينما تظل إجراءات الحماية الإلكترونية التي تتخذها الدول عرضة للإختراق في أي وقت وكما تعلمون فأن الهجمات السيبرانية تشن يوميا في العديد من دول العالم يتم التعامل معها من قبل أجهزة الحماية تلقائيا ولكن هناك العديد من الهجمات السيبرانية المؤثرة التي تعرض حياة ومصالح الناس للخطر خاصة وإنها تنطلق بسرعة وبشكل مفاجئ وبدون مقدمات ومن مواقع مختلفة من العالم وما يزيد من خطورة الأمر أن تلك العمليات يتم تنفيذها في الغالب من قبل عدد محدود من الأفراد وقد تكون بقصد التخريب أو الابتزاز أو غير ذلك وعليه فإن العلم الذي أوجد هذه التقنية الإلكترونية المؤثرة كفيل لمعالجتها خصوصا وإن الوضع بشكل عام بحاجة إلى معالجة شاملة من خلال وجود استخبارات إلكترونية دولية متطورة لديها إمكانيات تحديد مصادر التهديد فور حدوثها ويجب ألا يشعر منفذو تلك الاعتداءات الإلكترونية أو الهجمات السيبرانية بأنهم بعيدون عن العقاب الحضور الكريم لقد أصبح العالم بحاجة إلى فضاء إلكتروني مستقر تستفيد منه البشرية في التعامل مع تحدياتها للعيش في يسر ورخاء فالأمن السيبراني ليس مجرد مصطلح تقني بل هو جزء من الاستراتيجية الوطنية لأي دولة تتطلع إلى مستقبل آمن 
فرغم كل المنافع التي حققتها التكنولوجيا إلا أنه من جهة أخرى قابلتها العديد من التحديات ويبقى تحقيق الأمن السيبراني هو التحدي الأكبر والأهم وهذه ليست مهمة الخبراء التقنيين فقط بل مسؤولية تقع على عاتق الجميع ولا بد أن تتكاتف الجهود وبدءا من المؤسسات الحكومية والشركات الخاصة وصولا إلى الأفراد من أجل حماية المعلومات والبيانات الرقمية وفي الختام يسعدني أن أعرب عن شكري وتقديري للمتحدثين في المؤتمر وللمشاركين في المعرض والقائمين على الإعداد والتنظيم آملا أن يوفق المؤتمر في تقديم الأدوات والمعرفة اللازمة لتعزيز الأمن الرقمي وتقوية القدرات الأمنية لمواجهة التهديدات السيبرانية وبناء مستقبل أكثر أمانا في عالم الإنترنت متمنيا للجميع التوفيق والنجاح والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The two-day event reviewed advanced cybersecurity solutions through discussion sessions and training workshops. Cybersecurity experts and leaders from various countries provide discussion sessions, interactive workshops, and training sessions on the practical skills and knowledge necessary to effectively confront cyber challenges and work to improve the protection of data, networks, and digital infrastructure. The conference aims to enhance collective resilience against cyber threats and create a safer digital environment for individuals, companies, and governments worldwide. The company exhibition at attracted leading cybersecurity companies, startup companies, and technology providers. It showcases the latest innovation and prominent cybersecurity trends. The Arab International Cybersecurity Conference and Exhibition is a gathering that marks the intersection of cutting-edge technologies in the field of cybersecurity. It's an exciting number to see 5,100 participants come in uh, up to this hour. We're looking forward for more. Uh, we have an area uh, that is dedicated for workshops and sessions. This is the new addition to this uh, AICS this year. Uh, this area has more than 15 certified uh, workshops uh, and sessions. People could walk away with knowledge and certifications, engagements with uh, the cybersecurity leaders and experts, so they'll have hands-on training, hands-on expertise uh, from first-hand the pioneers that we have um, uh, uh, cooperated with this year. We are explaining to the visitors about how they can protect themselves from scammers, uh, about the spams, about uh, the fraudsters, how they attack the victims here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And we show them exactly how it works. Uh, and especially we are showing them how they can join our community uh, in the WhatsApp and to uh, also to follow our Instagram pages. Uh, as we are mentioning there every day, uh, what are the techniques and the ways that uh, the fraudsters are uh, attacking the victims here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The event hosted panel discussions, interactive workshops, and the training sessions on the practical skills and knowledge necessary to effectively confront cyber challenges and work to improve data protection, networks, and digital infrastructure. 
We participated last year in the first um, Arab International Cybersecurity Summit. So we came back this year because the benefit to us was we managed to make contacts in the Middle East and we were successful in getting some contracts to do some training work. We offer cybersecurity training for organisations and their employees from the board level down to anybody within your company that accesses a computer to keep you safe online. The conference aims to enhance collective resilience against cyber threats and create a safer digital environment for individuals, companies and governments around the world. Our purpose of participation basically to uh, explore the collaboration between the Saudi model of the cybersecurity and how we can exchange the experience of the cybersecurity threat landscape between the Kingdom of Saudi and the entire GCC. The conference presents an opportunity to network with the industry leaders, learn about the latest trends and technologies, and engage in sessions of the challenges facing the cybersecurity community. Uh, from Huawei perspective, we are contributing uh, in our booth to showcase our latest advancement in terms of technology. As you know, Huawei is a leading ICT provider in terms of infrastructure. So what we are showing here is cutting edge infrastructure when it comes to cloud, AI, and how we use those technologies to enhance and secure our cyberspace. The exhibition offers a chance for many local and international technology companies to display their latest cyber solutions at the forefront of global innovation. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatman Najam. The Arab International Cybersecurity Conference and Exhibition hosted several discussion sessions on the application of artificial intelligence to problems in cybersecurity. More in this report. Murky Keo, cybersecurity expert, presented the Creating Trust and Resilience for Digital Economies session. She touched on the importance of nation protecting physical infrastructure, routing, and domain name systems to ensure data security and integrity. What I wanted to concentrate on was areas of physical infrastructure, DNS, and routing security because I think that is critical for every nation state to focus on. I think that cybersecurity events are extremely important and I was very happy to see that Bahrain has such a huge focus on cybersecurity. I was here in 2009 talking about cybersecurity and I have seen Bahrain involve quite a bit and I very much like the fact that Bahrain has a national cybersecurity center. She explored case studies of how hackers can challenge nation state security and examined how bad actors can exploit routing hacks or hijack routing systems. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatman Najam. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dayna, participated in the high-level session on rapid implementation of national adaptation plans. The minister delivered a speech at the session in which he expressed thanks and gratitude to the UAE for establishing the Climate Fund worth $30 billion to bridge the climate financing gap. He emphasized the importance of strengthening financial mechanisms and capacity-building initiatives to support countries most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. He pointed out that bridging the financial gap is crucial to ensuring that the countries most vulnerable obtain the necessary financing in an urgent, immediate and effective manner. The Kingdom of Bahrain's unique experience in preparing for the national investment plan to adapt to the effects of climate change was also reviewed. The minister noted the topics discussed in the session, noting that this high-level event represents a pivotal moment for countries to come together and exchange experiences on transformative measures that will protect societies and the planet for future generations. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, received the CEO of Dubai Media Incorporated, Mohammed Sliman Al Mullah, accompanied by the CEO of Media Content at the company, Salim Bilyoha, on the occasion of their visit to Bahrain. The minister hailed their visit to the kingdom, which is in line with the fraternal historical relations between the two countries. He affirmed that Bahraini Marathi relations are witnessing growth in light of the strong relations and the mutual keenness on developing these relations to achieve joint aspirations. Dr. Naimi hailed the efforts of Dubai Media Incorporated among media institutions in the two countries. The two sides discussed the means of enhancing cooperation in various media fields. Then the accompanying delegation along with the minister and a number of officials to the ministry, visiting the new private studios and the new directorate. The delegation expressed satisfaction with the advanced levels of media in Bahrain and its modern potentialities that are comparable with those in modern international media channels. Thailand's ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Priya Pak Sicharo, and Mrs. Ram Polka Peter Thai hosted a reception on the occasion of the Thai National Day at Crown Plaza Hotel. 
the Under Secretary for Political Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended as the guest of honor with the Under Secretary of the Cabinet Affairs Ministry, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. Members of the diplomatic corps, Bahraini business leaders, and friends of Thailand honoring the event with his presence. In his welcoming remarks, Ambassador Bia Pak said that friendship between the two kingdoms continue to grow and prosper, guided by the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. It is the National Day of the Kingdom of Thailand, which is uh, celebrated also as the uh, birthday anniversary of the late King, His Majesty King Pumibun Adunyadev Rama the Ninth, as well as uh, the Thai Father's Day. So today is our celebration here in the Kingdom of Bahrain, and uh, we look forward to have our distinguished guests from the government and uh, the business community and our friends of Thailand uh, join us in celebrating uh, this uh, special event uh, for us Thai people and the Thai community here in Bahrain. I would like to express my congratulations to His Excellency, the Thai Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain and also to the Thai community in Bahrain, wishing them a very well healthy and good National Day of the, of the Kingdom of Thailand and we expressed solidarity with the strong support of our relations between Malaysia and also with Thailand because under the ASEAN community here we are very strong, we are very committed together in making sure that the growth of the economy between Bahrain and ASEAN and Thailand as well as other countries in ASEAN to grow together for the prosperity of our uh, countries. I'm very glad today for me to be here so uh, yes, I'm a new in Bahrain uh, and just for months I come to open my new company, you know, uh, brand me, even, you know, uh, uh, and uh, so I'm very happy to be here.